All right, we're going. Yay. Well, welcome you guys to the last team call of 2020. Um, so glad to have you here. Last, uh, two weeks ago, our team call was all about sort of celebrating what we did in 2020. It was a, an amazing call. If you haven't watched that, please go back and, and watch that because I think it's really important that you summarize and kind of put to bed what what happened this year before you move into the next year. So we wanted, uh, we want to make sure that you do that. But today we are going to prepare for 2021 and we thought it would be a really great idea to do that with Sam Higginson. You guys know him as our trainer uh, for Zaya. He does calls weekly with our top leaders, Lindsay, Costello was on recently with him. Um, and I don't think there's a better hype person in our business than Sam. I think every time I get off a call with him, I'm super inspired and just really ready to go. So we're gonna talk about some sort of predictions for 2021 and Sam's gonna kind of spread his vision a little bit. And then we're gonna talk about specifically what you should be doing now to prepare for your business to really take off um, in just a few weeks. So um, if you guys have questions, feel free to type them in the chat as we go and we can address them sort of, you know, at, at the end. Um, but Sam, thanks so much for doing this. I know it's a really busy week for everybody. So we appreciate your time. Well, thank you so much, Katie, and, and uh, for inviting me and just giving me the, the opportunity to be a part of your call today. And you know, it's, it's so fun because you mentioned Lindsay Costello and, and doing that, uh, you know, being on the, the, the guest speaker, what was it, two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's always a big moment for a lot of my clients. You know, sometimes um, one of the things that I will, you know, after I've done this, this analysis of their business and looked at all of their data, we, st we start to get into some of their strengths and their weaknesses on a personality level, right? And so we, we, we examine all of those things as well and challenge different people to different things that make them feel uncomfortable and scared and nervous. And, you know, I guess that's what I, you know, you talk about me being a hype man, you know, right now. And that's kind of really what I am. I do. I love to hype this business, but that's I, will, a fun job. I don't hype everybody else. I'm not hyping other businesses right now. I see what's happening within Zaya and I am hyped. I'm really excited. And so I have, um, I guess, you know, through my uh, playing sports or maybe the, the way my mother raised me. I don't know exactly, but it, I, when I'm excited about something, I, I have a, it's really easy for me to talk about. And so, um, but, you know, going back to Lindsay, though, it's just so fun to see somebody kind of conquer something and really step up to the plate and do a great job. And she did such a wonderful job that day. Um, and I, I expect to see so many people on this team stepping up into roles like that throughout the course of their their time here at Zaya uh, and for their career here at Zaya. But I, I'm just excited to be here today. Um, you know, Katie, I will never forget the call uh, that you and I had as well as Monica. I see Monica on here too. And the call that we had the very first time I started having these calls, which I think would have been sometime in late March of 2019. Wow. I was in a hotel room in St. George, Utah. And at a, I think I was at a baseball tournament or something, and I spent a day inside that hotel room just pacing back and forth, getting to know the top leadership levels within this company. At the time, I believe I was talking to all executives. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was like executives and above, and there was maybe 25 at wow. the time. That wow. I had and it's been amazing to see it change, but um, I'm really excited for you know this call. Um, I mean, I'm excited for the 2021. I'm really excited about what I see for this company in 2021. As you know, I represent a lot of other companies inside the channel, right? I spend a lot of time doing business and that analytics work for a lot of different organizations that represent different companies, whether it be in the skincare world or you know the health and wellness world. Um, I do represent a lot of other uh, leaders and, and do business analytics for those companies. And many companies can say that they experienced pretty good growth in 2020, right? Our channel was good in 2020 because there were a lot of people with extra time on their hands that also had some uh, trepidation about maybe their, where their job was headed or, or, or some, some things like that. And they were starting to say, hey, look, I can start to take some control. I love this brand that I 
represent, this product that I use, um, I really should probably start, you know, using a social selling platform or something where I can start to build my business. And, and that's what they, they saw happen. But one of the things that I will say is some of the growth in 2020 was a little bit artificial, right? It had to have been. Um, I don't know that we're going to have another March 12th scenario where the world shuts down and we go into this fear mode that creates and requires us to act and do things that maybe inflate our businesses a little bit more. So I think looking at, at last year, you know, um, hearing that there was about a four and a half times or a four and a half X growth factor that was built into our business. That's what the company experienced across the board. Um, I would encourage everybody to kind of go back to January 2020 and look to December 2020 and see where did you fit in to the rest of the company, right? Did you see that 4X, four and a half X growth? Um, did you participate and, and take full advantage of the opportunity that you had with your business? Um, those would be things that I would be looking at. Another reason I'm excited for 2021 is that there have been so many and are on the table right now being worked on. Um, Katie, you might have a little bit more insight being a board member, an advisory board member, but um, just the technological advancements that are happening both on the front end and the back end that have release dates in the early part of 2021 that I think make a magical or magnificent difference on our businesses in a very positive way. Um, I feel like there's more focus, more commitment from the founders than ever before. They really have recognized the talent that they've been able to acquire in the field leadership ranks. And they're recognizing, hey, listen, as the more we can get out of their way and let them teach us, let them take this brand to the next level, the better off that we'll be. And they recognize that. Not a lot of corporations do. A lot of corporations want to take the credit. They want to, you know, get in the way of some of that success, right? It's just, it's kind of a natural thing. Sometimes as leaders, we do that, right? We, we, we let people hang on to the side of the boat when they're struggling, but we don't always let them in the boat. And that's a big problem for, for so many people. Now, obviously, um, you can't let too many people in the boat or you, you might have problems unless you have a great big boat. So and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, but um, I just feel like there's just this incredible focus from the home office. They recognized, okay, here we are in the midst of all of this growth, but what is it that we really need to do to make sure that the experience is better for everyone in the future? What can we do from a technological side? If that's one of the pillars of the success of our business, right? If the pillars are brand, product, business plan, technology, um, not, not the pillars that, that uh, are talked about from a, um, uh, I guess, uh, uh, well, I can't think of the word I'm trying to say right now, but what Aaron Bradley kind of talks about, but I'm talking about just the strength of the business. Technology is definitely one of those, those pillars, and we talk a lot about that. Um, you know, and, and I see that they're making those advancements and they're bringing on some of the talent acquisition pieces that are just amazing. I mean, I wrote down some of the names earlier and I was thinking about just what the, they mean to this channel, right? And, and these are, you know, Holly and Sherry and Quinn and Courtney and Richard and Eric and uh, some of the folks that Lane's brought on to help support that, that side of the business. It's incredible because they are all folks that I come from Utah, right? I live in the channel. Basically, I'm surrounded by it. I can throw a rock and hit a company that's doing a billion dollars in sales um, from my house. I can throw a rock from my house and hit a company that's doing a billion dollars in sales. So there's a lot of successful businesses and the very best in every one of those categories, whether it be technology, finance, um, strategy, they're all coming together at Zaya right now. Uh, all of them joining in the second and third quarter of this year, second, third, and fourth quarter of this year. And so it's really exciting to see the talent acquisition piece for people to come in and have the know-how, have the experience, have the commitment. Um, and they have uh, you know, a lot of at stake for themselves too, which is really great that this, this founders team has recognized, hey, if we give them some skin, if we let them put some skin in the game, they can really do some great things. So all of those things considered are really great, but here's what has me super excited. Just some, some comments that I've had from Zach and Jeremiah over the course of the last 30 or 45 days. We all know what happened in September, right? Um, there was an incentive ran where we asked everybody to go out and, and grab your funnels, turn them upside down, shake them out, and then the company 
helped slap the backs of them to make sure that everybody was into the field. And it was something that I was kind of like, you know, nervous about, kind of uh, stressed out about, to be quite honest with you. But what happened from that was there was a major recognition happening within some back end data pieces that was saying, look, our business, we found out what our KPIs are and what drives our business to success. And it's the total number of parties, the efficiency rating of those parties, and then the engagement scores. Uh, for, you know, is it a one-to-one -one engagement, meaning one rep per, per one party? I mean, what are those engagement scores across the entirety of the, the field uh, population, um, the, the, the rep population, excuse me. And so I'm looking at that, I'm, I'm listening to some of these comments and, you know, I, I was, happened to be in the office for a meeting on the day after Black Friday or, or the, that next week, I guess. And the biggest sales day in the history of the company that didn't include the um, uh, certificates, right? If they were to wipe out all of that, they're looking at the total number of cells. And the thing that's so exciting about it is 80% of those cells were unique customers to Zaya. They'd never purchased anything from Zaya before in the history in their, in their lifetime. But 80% of that revenue was coming in with new rep or uh, new customers, unique customers. And then, you know, we look at, um, December and I, I think it was Zach last week he had mentioned that there was a 13 day span or the first 13 days of December that had hosted and opened and closed the most parties in any 13 day period in the history of our company. We've also seen the most unique new reps joining our business uh, in the history of the company um, and these are folks 91% of the people right now in our business uh, excuse me the reps in our business came by way of attending a party or buying something, a SKU other than that of a enrollment kit. So what does that tell me? It tells me that we are effectively refilling our funnels. We are doing a really good job considering everything that happened in uh, September and then October, um, just all of the, the numbers and the new unique customers and the hostings and the parties um, that were happening and the rep enrollments that were happening um, that funnel is really starting to fill. I think that we are doing a really good job on the awareness side of it. More people know about who we are. Still far, long ways to go. It's still the weakest part of our funnel by far is the largest part of our funnel, which is also very exciting. One of the reasons I believe 2021 is going to be good is that we have a ways to go with the awareness side, but we're doing a really good job with top leadership teams. Katie Monica, this team here specifically, does a really good job with helping people come from, go from awareness into the interest part of that funnel, which is the second part. You know, if you think of a funnel shape, awareness, interest, and then it comes to the point of decision um, is the, the very bottom where we're asking somebody to be a customer or a rep. Um, but what I'm seeing is, and we all know this, and we've applied this funnel to many other organizations for several years, and what we know is when there is a certain level of, of engagement, when there is a certain level of activity going on within the funnel from letting people know about who we are and inviting them to take a peek at some of those things, then into that interest side of the interest phase of actually they're seeing a video, maybe they are attending a party or they're participating in some way. And then we're, we're basically, you know, to that point where we're going to ask them to, to be a rep. And there's just enough pressure right now that I see that starting to play itself out. And I see it playing itself out in the early part of Q1 2021. Um, and everything that we do in our business, we always have to look, what does the next 90 to 120 days look like? From the activity that we are doing today, how does it translate into success or failure 90 to 120 days later? And that's been the case since day one. If you look back, and you go back through every bit of the data um, from Zaya's inception to where we are today, you can go back and almost look at that cycle, 90 to 120 days, good and bad, by the way. Um, what were things that we did from an incentive standpoint? What, what was it that we were trying to achieve as a goal? Did we recognize it properly? Was there proper training and coaching in place to allow for people to have success in what it was that we were incensing? And what did it do? for our, our business over the next you know, 90 to 120 days. So those are things that I'm looking at right now that suggests to me that 
we have a really great opportunity in the first quarter of 2021. And you know, what are those things? What are those KPIs that will drive us in 2021? Are they different than what happened in 2020? And the answer to that question is absolutely no. Um, it's still going to come down to inviting and hosting and total number of parties, setting a goal in January. I don't know, I would imagine many of you have already set goals. Maybe you've even created your own annual operating plan for what the 2021 is going to look like. That's something that's really big for me right now. I've, I love doing this call right now, Katie, by the way, because I have spent so much time just looking at reports over the course of the last seven or eight days that I've had enough of it. And I'm getting close to being finished with some of those. But, um, but again, it, it's going to come down to you know, setting that goal of I, I'm going to beat my party totals every single month from my represent uh, from my rep position down i am going to beat my party totals month in and month out i'm also going to be looking at very closely the efficiency ratings of those parties how much are we how what are we producing per party in terms of volume for our businesses um, and it's a really easy number to find maybe we'll get into that here in a bit but we know that if 91 percent of our current rep population which is at an all-time high and it'll continue to get bigger, but it's at an all-time high right now. 91% of that rep population bought a SKU other than that of a rep, rep enrollment kit tells me that it's all about parties. If we are hosting, we are finding new reps. Um, and, and that's what's uh, the true, th those are the biggest uh, drivers. And you know, of course, we always wanna look at um, that data. We always wanna make sure that we are looking at diving into understanding the data no matter where we're at in our business, we might be a senior rep or a director or an executive, but we should be looking at some of those historicals to help us to understand what is it that we did that was really good and maybe even that wasn't so good and how can we find ways to get a little bit better. So I kind of wanted to make that statement in terms of what has me excited about 2021 and why I think that this will be, you know, our next quarter will be our biggest quarter. And I think that it will feed into having the best Q2 of, of the history of Zaya, which will feed into having a great Q3 and a great Q4. Um, and I've, I've told many of my leaders, just looking at their current numbers right now, um, as I break down their businesses and do this business analytics report, there's, there's an opportunity for some leaders right now to have the best year that they've had in 2021, right? Um, we look at it and we say, look, if you're able to execute this plan that we've laid out and that you and I have both looked at and laid out, what it suggests to me is a good 2021, but a great 2022. And I want you all to be thinking like that, big picture. Let's get away from having this snapshot syndrome, right? I mean, November was a unique month. We had a, a con have a hotly contested presidential election. We had uh, COVID numbers that were surging and putting people back into a fear category. We had Thanksgiving um, that was different than we've ever experienced before. There was a lot of things that really played into that month. And, and what happened was for a lot of people, it, you know, they look back and they're like, oh, I got to really kind of pick it up a little bit. I got to get going again. I got to start hosting again. But the reality is we were doing a pretty good job. Many of the leaders that I worked with had to work their hardest that they've worked since joining the business. In fact, a good gal on this team, Gina, um, that I talked to a lot. I mean, she worked her tell off in November. She really got after it and did a lot of great things in the month of November. Um, and, you know, she fell short of some of her goals and it was a hard couple of days. But then she was able to look back and say, I can't have this snapshot syndrome. I've got to look at it deeper. I got to get, I got to look a little deeper into what's going on. And she did. And she's recognized that, uh, hey, she's in a really good spot right now going into 2021. And she'll continue to do that. And so I think it's really exciting for all of us to look at all the numbers, really dive into those numbers, find out where we're at and use the past to build the future, right? Use the past to make good and better decisions so that we can have a better future. Um, but then let the past be the past. We have to go and execute now, right? Right now, for me, it's all about activity. It's all about engagement. So there's a new uh, piece of data that I'm looking at right now where we monitor the total number of parties 
on the team versus you know the total number of reps that we have on the team and we do that at all levels so we take a presidential and we or a double xi or an executive and we drill down throughout the entire organization to find out where the engagement is happening on the team who's driving it maybe who's kind of pulling the 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 uh the growth line down a little bit who's lifting it up i mean we really need to understand all of that on our business right this is not a um, this is a very serious business at a very serious time. And um, I, I feel like, you know, we'll know that in five or six years from now. I want to I wanna act right now, though, so that when I look back on the past um, in five or six years from now, I know that I took all the steps necessary for me to at least give myself a chance, put myself in a good position to be successful. So um, I guess... I should, I, I, you know what, Katie, why don't you ask me a few questions because I, I still have so much more content that I could talk about, but I want to make sure that um, I'm touching the content that, that you and the team really want to hear today. Okay. That's, that's so good. I've got a lot of different notes. Can you give everyone, Sam, the efficiency formula to find yes. their, their efficiency? I think we did it on a leadership call, but not on a team call. Okay, perfect. Yes. So, the, the party efficiency ratings um, can be found this way. Now, again, I will, I want to give this disclaimer. It's not perfect data, but it is apples to apples comparisons. And that's what we're looking for here. So everybody across the board is being compared the same way, which does make it a little bit truer of data. But what we look at are, we want to find the total number of parties hosted. And the way that you can figure out the total number of parties hosted, that's the first part of finding efficiency, by the way. So that's why I'm going to tell both sides. But to find the total number of parties hosted, you're basically gonna run a, a, a report in your back office, you can pick any month. Let's take October. October was a fun month for a lot of people. Let's look at the month of October. So you're gonna go into your back office and um, you're gonna run a downline report for the month of October. Once you click run and it starts to load, there should be a white piece of paper in the top right hand corner with an X on it. It's gonna allow for you to export those numbers. Uh, once that loads, um, there's going to be all these different categories at the top, and you're going to scroll all the way over to PRTY, CNT, and then you're going to click on that column, right? It is a column, and you're going to highlight the entire column. For some of you, that might take a few minutes. For Katie and Monica, that might take a few minutes to get to the bottom, but um, really get to the bottom, and then it should give you a sum total at the very bottom of how many parties were hosted on your team every month. You're then going to divide, no, never mind. I'm sorry, I, I, <laughs> I was gonna give you the wrong formula right there. That gives you an idea of where you're at in terms of parties. Now to find the efficiency rating, you're going to look at the total number of uh, team group volume that you have, and you're going to divide Let's see, you're going to divide the total number of parties into the team group volume on your team, and that will tell you what your party efficiency ratings are. To give you an idea, um, some of our top leaders um, are sitting somewhere around the, most of them uh, are anything above 750 per party is what we consider healthy. So, you might be coming in a little above that. You might be coming in a little below that. Either way, it's totally okay as long as you know, right? So 750 is what we have decided across all 50 plus double Zayas was that they needed to be somewhere in that 750 plus range. For a director, that goes down just a little bit, um, but it's about 675. It's not a, a huge drop off. So I, I just want you guys to have that frame of reference um, for party efficiency rating. Does that that's, help, Katie? Yeah, that's that great. That I think everybody's probably going to get off this call and go do that. That's super helpful. Um, I also love, I love the reminder that, I love when you said 2021 is going to be really good, 2022 is going to be really great, and how it's just a great reminder that, yeah, if we're in this for the long run and we're going to treat 
our business like a business and it's going to pay us like a business and doing these uh, you know analysis type activities is really kind of key it's like it's like saying i need to really look at what i did to see where i can go i think it's just so important so that's yeah. a great reminder yeah um, and, and there's a couple of others um that are fun you know this time of year that i wanted to just share if that's okay yeah absolutely so these are these are some things that we are building and so we're looking at um when i talk to quinn when i talk to courtney and jeremiah and zach and we really start to think about what are the reports that a leader needs to see on like a leadership report, right? Um, we, we obviously, of course, party totals is gonna be right at the top of the list. Uh, party efficiency ratings is right below that. Um, we wanna look at the L1 senior rep plus status as well as the director lines. So for the, for the bigger leaders or the higher titled leaders, we're gonna be asking questions like, hey, how many directors do you have level one right is that number six or seven or is it 14 or and what are those goals throughout the course of the year so that we can keep um, a good follow-up system in place from those parties right we want to make sure that if we have a follow-up system in place we're doing a really good job of customer follow-up that's where we know and see the biggest and most successful rep enrollment ratings from our leaders um, but there's a couple of other um, stats that we that we dive into i mean of course rep enrollment party efficiency party uh total parties uh, engagement score which is you know we really want to know um total parties hosted versus the total number of people on your team you're dividing the total number of parties into the total number of people on your team and it's going to give you a, a a percentage um which we call engagement score and you know i hope that you're above 50 percent on that right? We want to see numbers that are well in advance of 50%. I just ran some numbers recently with some clients that um, were over 100% throughout the entire course of 2020. And interestingly enough, they are the, they actually, one of those leaders has the fastest growing team. And, you know, the, and so it does correlate to this engagement score. But there's a couple of others that we're starting to correlate. Um, and this is, a number by the way we're going to eventually have all of this the great news about all this it's going to be streamlined in real time in one place for you to see all of these numbers at the same time so that daily you can go in and be like oh i'm great i'm, I'm doing great on my party efficiency i'm doing great with my total parties my rep enrollment numbers look pretty strong um, my i've got a striking distance button that i can click on it's going to show me everybody who's about to hit junior rep everybody who's about to hit senior rep Everybody's about to hit director and so on. Um, but then we also want to know like how many advancements are happening within the month, right? Because this is all going back to correlating to what kind of onboarding do we have? What kind of community activity is happening within our communities? And, uh, you know, are we doing a good job of training and coaching? So real quickly, if you go into the um, commissions tab, this is because if you run a downline report, you can find... I think there's like a rank advancement button, but it's not exactly what we're looking for. We found another area in the commissions tab. When you click on details, and Katie, you might have to come off mute here because I don't know for sure. I, I don't have it up in front of me because I'm doing this. And so, but in, if you view the details, it should tell you uh, advancement per period. And in that, it'll show you new advancements that happen within your team. That's another thing that we want to see. We don't, there's not really a number that suggests the health of your business, except for we want to see that number grow. We want to see you beating month over month um, throughout the course of a 12 month cycle, right? If you start off with like three advancements happen on my team, February or in January, we want to see that at four. And again, in February, we want to see it beating it to five or six. And then you know, eight to 10 and then 20 to 25. I mean, we want to see that advancement and you can find it in your commissions tab. Yeah. It's very, I see it. Yeah. It's advancements in period, just kind of like at the okay. bottom of that. That's what I thought. Yeah. And click on that every month. These are reports that until we have it available to us, spend 10 minutes and make sure that you understand exactly where you're at. Um, I have uh, reports that I share and I, I would share them right now. I would share my screen. 
to show you um, how I, but it, it shows the name of the leader and I just don't, don't think that would be fair. So, um, but they're really cool uh, grids in Excel that you can create and share with your accountability partners or your upline to, to let somebody else kind of see what your goals are and help you to hold accountable to those goals. And so if I say, hey, you know, last year we average, or we were, you know, our high was 500 parties in one month. Well, I want to be at a certain percentage above that in January. And so I'm going to stick that to my number. And I'm also going to build my plan, my communication plan, everything around that. Um, another one, though, that is really fun for me is, is what we call the striking distance report. Yeah. When do you think that's coming, Sam? So it's, it's very soon. So just so you know, it's being written. The code is being written and created right now Yay. with the team. Um, and it's a Q1 release for sure amazing so, yeah and and it will probably there's a couple of different thoughts of where that will be housed but for everybody on this team i think it's important to note that this was one of the big things for this administration when i call it this administration um this this advisory board you know blair cells and katie harlan and um, natalie robison this was something that they you know helped kind of steer and helped create some some thought around if we knew, if we had this scoreboard for us, you know, what could we do with it? Um, what could we do with our businesses if we really knew where we were at and the things that we needed to focus on and work toward? So the striking distance report is something that you can go in and find right now. It's just kind of hard. Um, but again, go back to any month that you want. You can even run it current, but you run your report. Again, we'll use October as an example. Um, you're going to, as you go down uh, into that, that month of October, um, and I probably should look at my photo to make sure I don't steer you in the wrong direction. It'll take me one second. Hang tight. Uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, so if you run the download report, I have October built in, and then there's going to be a, a little box that says select level. Just type in one right there, and then it's going to be you know, you're gonna select um, uh, descending instead of ascending. There's gonna be a box either ascending or descending, click descending. And then there's gonna be a little drop down box. And I can't remember which is comes first, ascending, descending, and then the sort options or if that's above it, but either way, click on those sort options um, and find DCV, okay? And then you're gonna click run. And then it's gonna, it should have, the top performing team group volume achiever on your team in that list. And what I really want you to look down is just go as far as you can down that list to find out all of those people on your level one. And it's a manual way. It takes a little extra time, maybe 10, 15 minutes, but it allows for you to recognize where people are and how close they were to hitting a title um, or how close they are more importantly. And we ran an example of this, in October, this is where we kind of found, figured this all out with a client. And she found a gal that was about 4,500 points at, uh, of volume um, with about 20 days left in the month. And she sent her a quick message. Hey, you made my striking distance report. The next title for you is director. Here's exactly what your party totals look like and where you could increase, right? With more parties or better efficiency ratings. And I'm here to help you. And the person was so shocked, like, oh, I thought, you know, I thought you only cared about your other doubles or your other executives. Like, thank you for caring about me too. Uh, I'm just getting started. I'm excited though. And so they, they actually had an opportunity to engage and have a conversation. And the, the goal that we had set forth for this particular person was November, a director status by November. She actually was able to knock it out with two days left in the month of October. So you know, sometimes just that giving that information is so powerful. So powerful. Information is power. So yeah. Sam, for like the next few weeks, like getting prepared for quarter one, I mean, mm -hmm. you've given us a lot of different reports we can run and just different ways we can look at our business and different angles. So yes. you, I, you recommend everybody doing that prior to January. And then sure. as far as setting goals for quarter one, do you have advice for like, where people should start just is it more like set a goal for parties set a goal for recruits or do you have a different i don't know 
I, no, I would yeah. recommend that. For me, for me personally, um, because of the, the information, as you mentioned, information is powerful. For me, looking at our current uh, sales engine, our sales engine here at Zaya is very identifiable and it's through its parties, right? If you're hosting parties, um, it, it really, and, and you, they're good parties, right? You have some level of quality engagement in those parties and efficiencies. We, it, it, turn, it translates into almost every other good thing that we talk about, like rep enrollment, rank advancement, total number of check. So I would be setting goals. My very first and most important goal that I would set would be a party total. I would set a goal to say, look, I'm going to examine how many parties we hosted in October, November, December. I'm going to average them out and I'm beating that total in January. And I'm going to make sure that I have a plan between December 21st and January 1st to, to communicate to my team and make sure that I'm on board with my upline and what they're doing. Um, because they're probably likely going to have influence on that team too. But really to understand where everybody kind of fits right there to make sure that I'm going to beat that party total. And then of course, um, I'm going to set a personal enrollment goal because then I know I'm going to force myself to do the proper follow-up with those parties. And here's the thing. It's not, we can't talk about it. We can't talk about hosting and why they're important. We have to do those parties. We have to still host those parties. If we're going to learn about kind of what's out there and what's going on and best practices and how to coach and train people how to host, we have to host parties. We don't run three by 2,500 incentives so that your team can achieve three by 2,500. We do that for the leaders. Just so you know, that is always a leader, first and foremost, mindset for a company. When they're going to throw something out like that, the people they want to achieve that the most are the leaders because they know they have influence to help teach, train, and coach bigger audiences than they do. And and they really, and so if, if you want to be a leader, those are things that I would set my goals for because the reality is three by 2,500, that's what double Zayas do. They're really good at it. Now, they might have months where they don't quite hit the three number, right? They might hit the 25 pretty easy and they, they miss the three. But when they are consistent over a 12-month cycle, that's when we know that um, they're, they're about to have the best year that they've had in a long time because they have a lot of people that they can really work with and focus on. And we um, already know, too, that Zaya's incentive in January will be around the 3 by 2500 So yes. it's just a really good habit. By the way, it makes so much sense because when we break down each quarter based on where we're at, we look at – what is needed the very most right now? And it's filling that funnel. We know that a three by 25 um, kind of forces that a little bit faster than, than normal, maybe even artificially forces that funnel to fill up with potential um, customers and, and hostesses and then obviously reps. Um, but the reality is um, it's an activity based incentive. It, it's something that we will really push and incentivize the, to the best of our abilities um, to create the activity that is required to, to eventually produce the results. And so for me, if I were in the shoes of a leader right now, knowing what I know, recognizing 24 years of, of working with leaders like you, um, I would be focused on activity and I would be focused on rewarding and incentivizing that activity, right? Um, the activity of actually getting, sitting down and physically putting pen to paper on writing out my goals, then writing out the plan to execute the, those, the, those goals, um, identifying what is required from an activity standpoint, like actually I've got to make my list of 25 names, even though I'm already a director or I'm already a Zaya executive or double Zaya president, I don't care wherever it's at, you're still actually putting pen to paper and writing down those names or typing it. I'm fine with new technology too, but However you do it, it's got to be done. It's something that if you want to continue to move forward and be a big participator in what I think is the most exciting and, and uh, will, will be the most historically significant time in Zaya's history, um, those are things that you really have to do. And you have to set a goal to commit to making 
adding new names to those lists and then doing the reach outs and doing the invitation and practicing, really, really practicing. You know, my mentor is Craig Bradley, which happens to be the father-in-law of Aaron Bradley. He's the guy who really got me my first quality start in this channel many, many years ago. And he told me something that I've never forgotten. And it, it was this, Sam, if you are going to learn how to do this business, stop coming in and asking me, mm. go and do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to do this business in order to learn how to do this business. And, and so that means, you know, and how do we translate that to, to inviting? Well, go and invite, learn from those in invitations. What is working and what is not tighten up those things, write them down, practice them find, allow for them to become the really natural way of saying things to people um, in order for them to say, you know what, I, I really do. I'm bringing the right sense of urgency, the right cadence to the conversation. And people are showing up as a result of that. And I can teach it. I can make it something that's duplicatable because that was the other thing that he said was, don't ever, ever get too caught up into the things that work rather get caught up into the things that will duplicate themselves. Mm, so good. And that is a, that's a huge piece of advice that has helped me throughout the years because we all know that certain things do in fact work, right? If Katie offered a brand new car today with a big incentive for the person who signs up the most reps between now and the end of December, I would tell her it's a bad idea first and <laughs> foremost, but it would work. So you'd probably get a ton of enrollments out of it. But is it duplicatable? No, it's not. And so it wouldn't be a good idea um, for you to do. And so you got to always keep that into consideration every time you're thinking about what can I do for my team? Now, can I close with this? And Well, actually, I want to hear some other questions if you have any others. Um, I, I just wanted to point out that when you put, you know, you talked about putting, I can't even find my notes. I have so many notes, but when you talk about putting like setting goals around parties, the reason we set goals around parties is because that's where we find the reps. Exactly. It's not, so you're not just having parties for sales. You're having parties because that's where you find your reps. And that I think is where people sometimes get off the, the path of growing their business because you're growing your customer base. But your, the whole purpose in my mind of having parties is to grow your potential reps. Yeah, and, and uh, I love that because less than 9% of our current rep population was called or called somebody, uh, like, you know, and just said, hey, I want to sign up. How do I get going right now? I want to sign up. I want to host parties. I want to be crazy about this thing, um, <laughs> just like you are. And, and the, the reality is that's only 9% of our entire business which has become fairly significant so even if that happened to you even if that's how you joined this business like hey i want to get involved and i want to start selling that's just not the reality for the other 91 percent of our of our revenue base right you know so make sure when you're hosting parties that when you set a goal for how many parties you're also setting a goal for how many reps that's just as important yes and by the way katie um one thing i should add here is that um, the numbers that we're examining right now, so it's not just about new and unique customers, but we're also seeing uh, new and unique hosts as well. So we're seeing that number is inclining. So we're seeing a lot of new hosts that we haven't seen before, which also suggests that that's the cycle of success here at Zaya, right? Is we host a party, we invite to a party, um, those customers become hosts. Those customers have had a great experience, really like the product. If we're following up properly, it become hosts and those customer, those hostesses who have a great experience and have been onboarded properly, then become reps and successful reps, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's the cycle of success that should start right now and should continue through the course of next year. There's going to be no changes uh, as it relates to compensation or, or the only things that will, that will change is just some enhancements, some incentives that they run from time to time when they're feeling generous even sometimes when you're like, no, not that one, you know, like there's going to be some very generous moments throughout the course of this coming year. Take full advantage of, of having a full funnel and so that a large majority of your people can participate in some of those first things. I love it. I don't have any more questions, Sam. So what were you going to, or do you guys? I, I just any... wanted to say that, you know, a lot of people have asked me recently, what can I be doing right now? What's super important? Like it's Christmas time. There's 
I'm competing with dollars uh, and a lot of other retail companies that are, you know, competing with me right now. And, and, um, but I want to keep my team engaged. I want them to make sure that they're prepared for the coming year. And one of the things that I've looked at and, and, and examined, especially the clientele that I have here at Zaya, um, are the most successful leaders that I have are all about community. They have really strong communities. I would say, Katie, Monica, you guys, this team, I think a lot of the success is that there's a really tight-knit community that you guys root for each other. You care about one another. You really have everybody's best interest at heart. You really want for Leanne or Caitlin or whoever is on this call to be successful this month and next month and beat their totals and set their goals. But there's also something else to it. And that is that you're providing them value other than just great leggings or that, you know, new, the newest bra on the market or jacket or whatever it is that you're promoting what, you know, every Wednesday release day or launch day and, and all of you. Um, but I, I look at it more from the side of those leaders that seem to be rising to the top right now are those who actually provide value in addition to, you know, just the, the newest release information. You're actually giving them something else. You're providing something else for them. And, and we found that when you, when you let the community lead it, when you let that engagement lead it, that's where you, you find the most loyalties to your business. Um, and I think that's, it's a perfect example of Erin Bradley. She's created this incredible community that, oh, by the way, we happen to sell prestige activewear that is amazing. And a lot of people agree with her and buy it, right? Um, and I think that the, the teams that are seeing that huge number of new customers joining their teams, they're, they're teams that are really great with the communities that they have. And I use my wife's example all the time. Um, I think Jean has probably heard this before because I was talking to her last month about it and we, we talk a lot about community, but um, I heard my wife talking about some hand soap and or she was listening to a video about hand soap and it was called like Winter Haven and she's all about Christmas. Like there are, this is like one of <laughs> probably 10, 11 trees in our home and everything has got lights and it's all Christmassy and even our hand soaps. And so I thought, oh, I should do something nice for my wife. I'm always in my office, uh, usually talking to other women. And so yeah, I can do something that's nice for her too. And so, um, cause I love her and, and I bought this hand soap. I went online and they had this little deal on Williamson Sonoma. And, you know, I, I went through the process, bought it. And a couple of days later it showed up. And when it showed up, she was really excited and she was happy. And she was like, Oh, this is so fun. And, and by the way, she was listening to one of her favorite influencers on Instagram and there was no value by the way, for her to go in and buy it from them. Other than she really likes what they give to her. They make her feel better about being a mom and about being a wife and about, you know, being a, a working professional and all those other things. They, they've provided all this value for her. And so when it showed up, she was really happy and grateful that I thought of her and bought the gift for her. Um, and then she asked like, well, did you use the code from so-and-so? And, -so? and I, I can't, I think it was late with Kate. I can't remember exactly, but like one of the influencer followers, and she said, um, did you use her code? And I said, no, I just bought it. And she was kind of almost angry with me. Like, how, how dare you buy something from this company without using that woman's code? Um, and, you know, the, the, the soap was, I had no idea what soap was going to be. You know, I didn't know like what you should spend on soap or anything, but it was 38 bucks for two little bottles that you know they say winter haven and they don't foam up real great and we all know soap this year right we know soaps we know good soaps because we use it so much more. but um but the thing is uh it, it was i realized that she makes my wife feel better about who she is as a person and because of that because she provides her with all kinds of value i mean they most of the meals we eat in this home come from this influencer mm -hmm. most of the the things that we do on vacations and things come from these influencers. They've provided all this extra value that when they offer a soap, you can bet your butt they're going to buy it, you know, and exactly. it's that community that drove it. Yeah. And so I think that as we go into the new year, what kind of value are we providing to our VIP groups outside of the newest and greatest new release? 
what kind of value are we providing, uh, providing for our teams outside of the best practices on, um, you know, dealing with overcoming objections or whatever, right? What other value can we provide to our teams? And I think that's super important. And I think that's something that um, a lot of you guys do a really good job of, but, but many more could do a lot more uh, of creating that, that loyal base. It's like the pillars were more powerful than they ever could have realized when, you know, yeah. than Erin could have realized when she wrote them. They just yeah. keep playing out in these ways. That's so fascinating about the adding of the value and that was so good. Yeah, and no disrespect to Williamson Sonoma. They're so, I'm sure it's great. It had essential oils and whatnot. <laughs> it was also $38. It's and a lot. I guess that's, that's a lot for soap. It's I didn't a lot know for soap. that. I felt like <laughs> I'm it was sure it was super cute, but. What's that? I'm sure it was super cute. Yeah, it is, and it smells good. <laughs> okay. So. Well, Sam, thank you so much. I, I, um, I think that everyone is really excited for this year, and we just feel, we just feel like we have this big energy behind us and with us, and we're kind of ready to go serve and and uh, create an amazing year for our families and our teams and. Thank well, you I so have much. no doubt about this team, just so you know. Um, you. A big part of what I do is help Aaron Bradley recognize the on-brand reps, right? Who's on brand? Who really gets it? Who follows through with the pillars that you just talked of? And this is one of those teams that I have absolutely no doubt about. This is a team that absolutely is on brand to who we are. And um, I expect nothing but really, really good things from this team. But it is important to know where you're coming from, know what you just experienced and how to make it better, right? We want to take full advantage of it and help a lot of people. But you guys are awesome. And I have no doubt that you'll be a big, big part of the stories that are created in 2021. Because you certainly have been about 2020. Thank you, Sam. I'm crying again every time. <laughs> Have a Merry, Merry Christmas, Sam. Yes. Merry Thank Christmas. You, too. Merry Christmas to all of you. All right, you guys. I hope you have a great week and uh, happy, happy new year. Thanks again, Sam. I'll talk to you yep. soon. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody.